Chris Bumstead, the man who has revolutionized bodybuilding, the living image of success, the idol of millions of young people, a life that looks like a movie script. We recently saw him win his fifth Mr. Olympia. A few days ago, he announced that he is going to be a father. <laughs> You're pregnant. Are you kidding me? And many of you here probably think you know the life of Chris Bumstead. Since we started this channel, he was still celebrating his third title. And in such a short time, we have seen him become an established legend. But what if I tell you that this image of profound success has faced a real odyssey in every preparation? From the early ones with his health problems, to the latest biceps injury, to something we all didn't know about this latest preparation. Chris Bumstead, a few weeks before the Olympia while performing a dead weight, suffers a dorsal injury in what I dare say is the champion's flagship muscle. And is that we all know Chris Bumstead, but we really know each of those details that have forged what is beginning to be more than bodybuilding history. So today, I invite you to see the entire trajectory of Chris Bumstead, from what you already knew to the most hidden, a documentary version of his life updated. From his beginnings in the gym to the best images that has left us this Mr. Olympia of Olympia. So now you know, take your seat and get ready to know every last detail of the man who is already becoming a true idol of the masses. Christopher Adam Bamstead was born in Ottawa, Canada. Since he was a child, you could see his great passion for sports and also his good physical predisposition. In high school, Chris played multiple sports such as soccer, baseball, basketball, and field hockey. He began lifting weights at the age of 14 and between the 9th and 12th grade. He went from 77 kilograms to 102, with his legs growing the most. Chris Bamstead went so far as to comment that his workouts were based on strength exercises at relatively low repetition rates that had transfer to the sports he played. His main focus was on developing the legs as much as possible. And, as with his improved physique, his strength scores were not far behind, lifting very heavy weights for his young age. Ian Vallier was one of the people who encouraged Chris Bamstead to tap his potential and compete in bodybuilding. Since then, the open bodybuilder has been the one who has been in charge of Chris's training. Recently, it was suggested to Chris to share a photo where his natural physique could be seen, and he shared this photo, which is exactly from the year 2013. However, the publication generated a lot of doubts because of its large size, with those nice insertions, and what seems to be the beginning of gynecomastia. Considering that it started from this other basis, the American fitness community took the publication with many doubts, because no other photo of Chris appeared that could give us another perspective. Instead, the accusations of fake natural made Ian Vallier come out to explain, and this was enough for us to know the date of Chris Bamstead's theoretical first cycle for his first competition, and therefore his bodybuilding debut. And this is what Ian Vallier said in a comment to a More Plates, More Dates video detailing exactly the cycle Chris Bamstead used for that first competition in the year 2014. Chris did his first oxandrolone cycle starting March 2, 2014, 40 milligrams a day. He would even go back to my email to confirm. He did that for six weeks. Then he makes the decision to go to competition, which he was about seven, eight weeks away from, and we started his first real cycle which consisted of injectables for that competition, which was at the end of May 2014, which I think was testosterone like 125 milligrams every other day, like 400 milligrams a week, 40 milligrams of oxandrolone and some clen and an aromatase inhibitor. And I want to make a point at this point in the documentary because I know that talking about these kinds of issues can be very complicated, but I said it in the previous documentary about Ramon Dino, and I say it again now, this is bodybuilding, for better and for worse. We cannot simply talk about a story of overcoming, training, diet and preparation, and ignore that part that we all know. And if we don't know, we can give here a breath of fresh air to people who might see the documentary to show them the few facts, because this is how it is. These issues do not come to light. 
We don't talk openly about what is used and what is not. In many occasions, for fear of making an apology to consumption when it is the opposite, what should always come first is the truth, and the truth is that Chris Bumstead, to be Chris Bumstead, had to resort to substance use in the year 2014, and then, subsequently, the following years. And this is nothing compared to what he's using right now. But that's why. I want the documentary to be more complete, and this was a subject that obviously was not going to be ignored. And as I said in the previous documentary by Ramon Dino, the exact moment in which he started using substances was pointed out. The exact moment in which Ramon Dino began to consume, which was with his trainer Mars Garcia for a men's physique competition. With Chris Bumstead we have this information. We are not going to ignore it and we are going to make this very clear, which is that we are talking about bodybuilding and bodybuilding, fortunately or unfortunately is this. These are substances that are super mega harmful to health and especially in the competitive world. And make no mistake, this does not guarantee success, this is not the most important part of all, because if the base of being Chris Bumstead, who he is, and the genetics he has, and all the conditions that have squared for him to be who he is, well this part is not what makes him a champion, but it is a part that has to be addressed, and that I wanted to pick up in this documentary, and I do not want it to be overlooked in subsequent documentaries or reports that are made, because we are talking about bodybuilding, and part of bodybuilding is this. It is not about making an apology to consumption, nor to ignore it. No, it's about telling the truth. That said, this was Chris Bumstead's first competition on May 24th, 2014 in Canada, where we can already differentiate that structure that characterizes him so much. It really surprises his lower body, since that dorsal amplitude that sets him apart from the whole lineup of the Mr. Olympia was not as remarkable as we can see it today. The pectoral is also quite smaller, but what can we expect? In Valier's words, and taking his comment as true, this was Chris's first preparation, his first contact with chemistry, and look at his physique. He won this competition in the junior division, heavyweight and overall. Some time later, Chris Bumstead clarified that the reason he wanted to do that first competition was to live the experience, that he didn't really know what to expect from that first show. When Chris won those two titles, it was when he himself acknowledged that he saw in himself the potential to succeed in the sport. In Chris Bumstead's own words, those two wins motivated me to go to the next level and ultimately see how far I could go. And boy was Bumstead right. The following year, in 2015, as you can see in the pictures, he competes against a bodybuilder already recognized worldwide, which is Reagan Grimes, who ended up drifting towards the open category of bodybuilding. We see how Chris's pectoral already has more volume, the arms are more proportionate, and the structure in equis is becoming much clearer. In this competition, in open, he came in third. Undoubtedly, he could already measure himself against open bodybuilders at that point. Let's remember that in 2015, the classic physique category was not yet fully defined. But going back to Chris Bumstead's path, after those competitions, he decided to do an off-season to look for the professional card in 2016. He himself said that in this off-season, he started to practice a lot the poses and transitions because it was one of his weak points. He recognized that it was not something he had mastered. If we see the evolution of how he performed on stage in those first competitions, to how he does it now, we realize that the fact that Chris Bumstead is there goes far beyond genetics and physique but we are dealing with someone who is a perfectionist with every detail of his preparation. And what was his weakest point? He knew how to turn it into one of his distinguishing marks today. And because of this mentality, his first great achievement was about to come. In the year 2016, Chris Bumstead was already beginning to be known. Every report, every update he uploaded to social networks had a lot of repercussion. People were already beginning to see a structure that was very difficult to beat and above all a structure designed for a specific category, classic, and physical. This is how in the season of 2016, Chris Bumstead achieves his professional card in North America, winning the heavyweight division. Here it is necessary to emphasize a very important thing, and it is that Zeboom was only 21 years old at the time. That is to say, only two years and three months had passed since his first competition. That's why when social networks saw this potential, Zaboom's fame saw this potential, Chris's fame skyrocketed. After getting the pro card, Chris Bumstead's professional debut arrived. Everything pointed out that it could be the dream debut. 
Not only was it his pro debut, but he was also making his debut in the classic physique suit, which he himself knew was definitely his category. However, when everyone was expecting the best from Chris Bumstead, one of those huge paradoxes and contradictions happened that is not the first time that happens in the competitive circuit. Chris Bumstead did not manage to win that event, and perhaps some are thinking, well, it will be because I can distinguish among the competitors no more and no less than Rough Diesel. Although he seems to be a bit of a blur, but gentlemen, Rough Diesel didn't win either, and as you may have noticed, the line I'm trying to maintain in this documentary is an objective one that the facts speak for themselves about Chris Bumstead's story, but my feeling, if I don't make this comment, is that the documentary will be incomplete, and for me it was one of those days in which the credibility of this sport was put in doubt, and it must be said and it must be emphasised. Indeed, one the only Mr Olympia among them. And with all due respect to Darren Charles, who won the title, who is a competitor from head to toe with many professional championships behind him and with incredible merits, but in that championship and more in classic, where the premises were clear, to be a balanced harmonic aesthetic physique. And that night, Darren Charles was not the athlete who best met those characteristics. However, after all this, Chris Bumstead only spoke out to say that he himself had some room for improvement. That he himself had some room for improvement and from then on, he would never again fall below that position, neither in the following pro championships, nor of course, in the Mr. Olympia. Moreover, the true potential of Chris Bumstead would be more than enough demonstrated with his victories in the 2017 pro championships in Pittsburgh and Toronto, showing to the world as what could be, as what could become a true classic physic legend. Trying to dance on what? Let me know. Let's go. We get to the point where this gets interesting. We are at the point where Chris Bumstead is about to step onto the stage for the for the first time on the stage where only the best can stand, the stage of the Mr. Olympia, and he would do it in a category that was just starting, that was just beginning, which is the classic physique, and he would do it with an expectation and a hype that the fitness industry could not foresee, and that over the years has still been growing more and more to the point where we are today. The work is done now. Yeah, no point in fucking with anything at this point, so we'll just keep them. Mom and Dad. <laughs> They're excited to be here. It's pretty crazy having my sister there at the Olympia with me for sure. Like, me and my sister are extremely close. We're not one of those brother sisters who like bicker and fight. We've always been really close and supportive with each other, like best friends since day one. And being able to walk backstage with her, especially, was amazing. I mean, I'm not no one's ever, I guess, been able to share that experience with a sibling. And, being so close with her was an amazing experience, which really helped, helped me a lot having her. First name Brian, second name Chris Bumstead. I was like, holy shit! Like, this is very possible. Like, top five right there. And almost immediately, they moved me into the middle. And I swear that I've tried, but none of them can 
It's not easy watching your son transform his body the way he is, eating so weird, being hungry all the time, tired all the time. But for them to like still support me so much and be so happy for me, know, seeing that I'm enjoying it, it helps a lot just knowing that they're happy for me. Over the top. <laughs> and as Melissa says, to the moon and back. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing. It's been an amazing day. The guys that he's fighting in the top spots for were, you know, all have exceptional conditioning, so we wanna we wanna be you know equaling them on that as well as beating them in our strength. So down which was fun and then we're enjoying that and then all of a sudden the music stopped we're like all right gentlemen diagonal line on the side of the stage and you're just like shit like this is the moment of truth we're all standing beside each other quiet waiting and then he called fifth place wasn't me and he called fourth place wasn't me third place still wasn't me i was like that was beyond my expectation already i was like top two like holy shit i looked at brian i was like it's you and me man and he just had a big grin on his face as he always does and we just put our heads down waited and they called hit. They called my name first, second place, and zero. Like, I wasn't upset at all. I was just. I was already so thrilled that I was there, the top two in the world. I mean, that's up, my first ever Olympia. I'm 22 years old, and it was just an amazing feeling for sure. Step out there. They put the medal around your neck, and it was just. It, it blew my expectations so much that I was just overjoyed. It's over. It's all over. Chris Bumstead's debut was arguably a dream. At only 22 years of age, he had achieved a second place. But above all, he had left the sensation of being the physique that came closest to that ideal of the classic body. Ahead of him was only Brian Asley, with whom he would begin a rivalry that would accompany us throughout the following years with moments that would go down in history. 2017 seemed that it was not yet Chris Bumstead's year. He still had some aspects to improve, starting with the density of the back, Brian's strong point, and there were also detractors of Chris's potential, saying that those arms could never win a Mr. Olympia, which raised expectations for the following year even more. In 2018, Chris Bumstead came in promising and improved physique in every aspect. All the cameras were pointed at him. This year seemed to have his name written all over it, in his second year as a professional, he could be getting the biggest award in the fitness industry, something that would be historic. It is against this backdrop that Chris Bumstead jumps onto the Mr. Olympia stage, but it seemed that something was amiss. Chris had come out with a physique that looked quite held back, watered down, far from the condition he had achieved last year. What was happening to see Bum? And it is that backstage we could see how indeed this retention was more than noticeable. In spite of that, Chris came out to the stage. Brian Astley and the veteran American would win the championship for the second year in a row, and deservedly so. It wasn't until several weeks later that Chris Bumstead came out to tell the full reality of his preparation. Not everything was rosy in his race to become Mr. Olympia. It turns out that Chris suffers from a problem that could literally end his career. Chris had to stop training for six days while he underwent medical tests, and the results confirmed the worst. Chris was suffering from an autoimmune, autoimmune disease. See, Bum has Berger's disease, a kidney disease that is caused when an antibody called Immunoglobin, also known as IgA, builds up in the kidneys. Immunoglobin is an antibody that serves a vital function in the immune system. It attacks invading pathogens and fights infections, but in people with IgA, this antibody accumulates in the glomeruli, which causes inflammation and gradually affects their ability to filtering capacity, and hence, the high retention of Chris. IgA is generally known to progress slowly over the years, but the course of the disease varies from person to person. In some patients, traces of blood are seen in the urine without causing problems, and in others, it is present, end-stage renal failure. For those who are interested, all the medical sources consulted can be found below in the description. 
Like honestly, every single morning I woke up and I was so discouraged with how I looked. Like literally like losing weight. I, when you're flat, like when you're taking these diuretics and you're, I'm still holding on to water. I literally was like, people think you're flat. Tried like taking diuretics for four weeks straight, having no, nothing in your body, going so low carb, pushing cardio, pushing everything. And I was, I did not practice posing this prep at all, to be completely honest. That's why I was like, my routine I didn't practice because I was literally ashamed of myself when I looked in the mirror. I was so discouraged every day. They did our first comparisons and they brought me and Brian back to the back of the stage, which essentially they always do for the top two. And I'm not gonna lie to you, at that moment right there, I was fucking, I was done. I was like, I had already won in my mind. Ugh. But yeah, when they called us back and it was kind of like your top two, Chris, I was, I had won right there. I was like, holy shit, I can't believe we pulled this off. Like, the shit I went through in this prep mentally. It was 2019, and for Chris Bumstead, in addition to all the problems that a preparation entails for any athlete, there was the added uncertainty of not knowing how his body might react to the disease. His body might react to the illness. If he was not able to control this, Sebum would not be able to go out on the stage conditioned. At these levels, the role of the mind is as directly related as the physique's response to diet, training and substances. All four factors have to be in full compliance or else the bet on point fails. Sebum was giving his all so that this year none of that would happen, nothing would fail. And because of this problem and his struggle to try to control his inflammation, we owe the now so famous and well-known cold water baths to which Sebum has accustomed us. I know that your parents don't want you with me. I don't know if it's my tattoos or the way I live. Tell them that you love me. That you don't pay attention to what they say. We are living and falling in love every day. Tell them I'm the one you Each time the date of the Mr. Olympia 2019 was getting closer and closer and the doubt about Chris's conditioning was there. But nevertheless we were seeing a very confident Chris Bumstead, a Z-Boom who had shown himself totally focused in preparation with a very good muscle tone. But above all if anything we were seeing that was a Chris who for the first time had grown the now mythical moustache and since then has never gone out to compete without it.
Undoubtedly, this Chris Bumstead had absolutely nothing to do with last year. In that stage outing, he presented a much improved condition. A better muscular quality was also visible. The insertions and separation of each of the muscles was much more noticeable. In addition, it was noticeable how his confidence was different. It seemed as if I had gone out on the stage as if I had already won. Months and months of uncertainty were behind him. Of cold water baths, Chris had trusted Ian Ballier's plan. I walked into that doctor's office like terrified. Obviously, it was five days before my flight to Vegas. I didn't know if I'd be able to get on that flight. I didn't know if I'd be competing at the Olympia. I didn't know if I'd be bodybuilding ever again because I literally didn't know what, what I was expecting to hear. You know, when I first met Chris, he was just, you know, a young guy, 16, 17 years old. And, I mean, even then he loved to, to lift weights and, you know, always wanted to be the big, muscular, you know, bodybuilder. I mean, you could even see from then his aspirations were, were pretty clear in, in terms of what he wanted. And even then I think his gifts were really clear. I mean, you could see, you know, even then back in high school, I mean, he was far superior to, you know, any of his classmates in terms of his, you know, muscularity or his drive in the gym. You know, I think those gifts were you know, a parent right from day one. You know, for me, working with him, even from his first show all the way up to this most recent Olympia, I mean, with every gift that Chris has been given, you know, which is a lot, I mean, no one will dispute that. He's been given, you know, trials and tribulations that he's had to face for every one of those gifts. And, you know, I think that's really what led Chris to this year is overcoming those obstacles, you know, that he faced, you know, different obstacles. They weren't the same ones every time, whether it was an injury or his kidney d disease that he's been fighting. Um, you know, every year it's it's been something that he's had to overcome, and I think that's built him into the champion that we saw this year, right? And, I mean, it makes me so proud, you know, to look at the character growth and the personal growth. I mean, the titles are one thing, and I'm, I'm happy for Chris, and I'm proud for Chris of what he's been able to accomplish in this sport from a competitive standpoint. But I think the most important things and the most, you know, meaningful things for me to see and that make me the most proud is to see, you know, the growth within him as a person, um, you know, and, and that drive and that, that push and that want, you know, and that dedication and the, these, these things that have developed in him that, you know, go far beyond bodybuilding, right? I mean, these things carry over, you know, into his character and into the person that he is today, which I'm extremely proud of and I know his family is as well. 
Jake will take the second place award, the check for $10,000, the Olympia Silver Medal, to our runner-up this evening, Breon Ansley. Award is CEO Greg Conley from Trifecta. IFBB Pro League President Mr. Jim Manuel. Let's go, Greg! The first place award, the check for $30,000, the Olympia gold medal, and the title of 2019 Classic Olympia Champion, Chris Bumps. Let's go, Chris! Let's go! All right. Now, Chris, I'm, I'm told it was very, very close right to the end, but at the end of the day, it was the mustache that brought it in. You know, I, I was debating last year for the longest time, and it got the better of me, but I don't think I was ready to rock this ash on stage, but this year it was, it felt right, you know, had to be done. <laughs> it's classic. Well, you had brought in a new era, my friend. Now, you've got a huge amount of support out there in the bodybuilding world. The last couple of years, you've been this close to the title. You finally got Breon because he's a hell of a champion. Oh, my God, yeah. Breon is he's a champion that I've been, I've been chasing after for a few years now, and I, I'm grateful that Breast left the stage along with him, along with his 35 other competitors here today. Absolutely crazy. The growth that classic division has had in only a few years of being around. So I gotta thank the IBB, Jim Mannion, Olympia putting on such an amazing show. It's really just such so grateful to have given us the opportunity to present our physiques in such a new slash old school way, kind of bringing it back, defining what classic physique is, what it is, as the vision is going to become for it's gonna be around for a long ass time because I know you guys love it, I love it, and we put on a damn good show, so. Chris Bumstead. There he is. I was looking for him. There we go. Get in here, buddy. Get in here, buddy. Chris Bumstead, Classic Physique Olympia Champion. How does that sound? Sounds goddamn good. I'm, <laughs> feels good to hear it. I'm ready. I was ready for it this year. It's my first year. I knew I needed to hear it, and we worked for it. Got it. Come on, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Chris Bumstead had achieved the most difficult thing. He had managed to control all his health problems to go out conditioned to the stage and thus fulfill a dream that at times seemed unattainable. But like every success story, it doesn't end here and Chris Bumstead still had a lot to prove. His status as champion did not put him above the rest or the critics, and he himself acknowledged that he still had room for improvement. After looking at the comparisons in detail, that the Battle of the Backs was won by Brian. The two-time champion's back was the best back in the classic, and although in the front poses Chris's big backs put him a step ahead, nothing was set in stone for the following year. Brian is a person who achieves extreme definitions and is very much a veteran, and nothing spared Chris from new competitors who could surprise as he did back in the day. 
Champion status only added to the pressure and the eye with which Chris Bumstead's physique is judged. But as Seaboom once said, Pressure is a privilege. He and Ian Vallier got down to work with a clear objective, to give him as much density as possible to the back, and achieve the best physical condition of his career. It was because of this that in that year, 2020, we saw a Chris Bumstead more focused and focused than ever. Serious faces in training. He still had a lot to prove if he wanted to leave a legacy. This Mr. Olympia was key to cementing his position as champion of champions. And now we are approaching the date of the Mr. Olympia 2020, and we can see something different. We can see something different. Chris Bumstead shows in every workout and in every report a much improved physical condition from last year. There was only one thing that remained unchanged, and that was the mustache. The mustache. Another year, Chris Bumstead repeated the mustache. Fuck you, and you, and you. I hate your friends, and they hate me too. I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. Is that how go bummer and then turn it up and throw attention? That how go bummer and then turn it up and throw attention? That throw up in your Birkin bag, I'll cop with someone random. That social awkward suicide that bite your lips and bite your life. Twice she had a member, she did different when it's Thursday night. College dropout music every day, like they she be too thick. My friends are all annoying, but we go dumb, yeah, we go stupid. That 10k on the table just so we can be secluded. The vodka can't dilute it, one more line, I'm superhuman. Fuck you, and you, and you. I hate your friends and they hate me too I'm through, I'm through, I'm through It's the hot girl bummer anthem Turn it up and throw attention The hot girl bummer two-step They can't box me in them two left The drip is more like oceans They can't fit me in the Trojan Out of pocket but I'm always in my bag Yeah, that's the slogan Is that who's all there? Pulling up with an emo chick that's broken. I was just like jaw dropped, like holy shit. Because yeah, I see him every day pose in the morning, take his videos or pictures, pose again at night at the gym, do it again. Morning, like it's just, it was every day for months. So yeah, it's not like you get numb. To, you kind of like, okay, yeah, you look good. You look good, you look good. Holy shit, holy shit, you look insane. And then like in Orlando, it was like, what? Like, just mind blown. Mind blown, absolutely complete difference. You see a body that has like changed so much in a year, all you can think is that like, it's finally healthy and it's finally happy. And I just, I felt like I was looking at the beginning of a very, very long legacy. Mind, body, and spirit. <laughs> but... Don't be a pussy. When Chris Bumstead came out on stage that day, everyone got the feeling of seeing a physique. That was at the peak of his career. A physique Chris Bumstead had not yet achieved until that year. The conditioning was exceptional, but if there was one moment when we all realized what Chris Bumstead could have accomplished, it was when he did that back double biceps. The back had come in improved, the back had come in dense. The point that he had been criticized for last year was far superior. 
the conditioning, the skin, the execution of every single gate. Everything seemed to have gone well. Now the most important thing was missing. It was to put that physique in comparison with the rivals that separated him from winning his second Mr. Olympia. Last year, being in still impressed by other people up there, you know what I mean? Like I would see Brianna, I'm like, oh my God, he looks really good. Or George last year, I'd be like, wow, he looks really good. But this year, like, because of the amount that he was in his own league, I wasn't even shocked by them. You know what I mean? I wasn't, I didn't even look at them and say, oh, they look really good. Because he was so dominant. And I think after I saw him in the lineup, after I saw first call out, I was like, this is lights out. I'm pretty sure we all texted each other. We were like, we don't even have, like there's not a single doubt in my mind. If Christopher does not repeat this, something is wrong. Like it was just so obvious. You know, so mentally on. Yeah, that was good. I'm so here if was on Thank you for all you do. I honestly, in my like heart of hearts, I knew for months, like what, you know, I saw him at like six weeks, eight weeks. Cause like, I mean, you, like I've also, as silly as it sounds, like I also thought of it just from like a, 
logistical standpoint of like, okay, he won last year being a, a fraction of what he is this year. You know, and I could see that it was so far improved from a multitude, like, you know, from his back shots, from his muscularity, from the conditioning that we achieved weeks out. Like, you know, I knew that there was absolutely no way unless something, you know, unforeseen happened that he wasn't going to surpass that one. <laughs> Winning this year was like different than last year and the moment I felt on stage was similar yet also very different. There was like that bit of relief that there will always be when you hear your name like fuck yeah you did it. But this year there were so many people whispering in my ear like throughout the show after prejudging and everything being like oh congrats man you've already won, you did it, you already won. And like I'm a huge believer in just like it's not done until it's fucking done. And people are being like oh the hard part's done you can just enjoy it now after prejudging. And I'm like, fuck no, like I need to keep my mind on right now. I haven't won anything yet, I haven't earned shit yet, I still gotta kinda keep it locked down. And I think once you start to believe people whisper in your ear like, oh you're the best, you're gonna win. You're kind of, that just makes you take your foot off the gas and you start to kind of weaken up. So I really try and avoid that. So that being said though, obviously I had a little bit more beliefs that I could win this year. I was a returning champ, I had made crazy improvements, I saw the pictures and the way they were moving around the callouts, I had a stronger belief that I was gonna win this year, but that doesn't take away from how amazing it feels to have your name called. And it was a little different experience this year. It was my first time ever up there with Terrence being second person calling me, I've always been beside Brion. So that honestly, that was the biggest shock that I had on stage when I was standing there and they called Brion third. I was actually like, holy shit, okay. And I couldn't be happier for Terrence and I know it made Brion fucking hungry to come back better next year, so. It's a good thing on both sides, but I was really happy to be up there with Terrence, the guy, me and him have been kind of friends for a while, and I know he's a workhorse, amazing poser, so happy to see that happen. And then when we were up there with that, we were kind of, we could crack jokes with each other up there, and he kind of already knew he was second. And I still just, I wanted to just put, not even think about it and wait till they called my name. And when they did, it was just, like I said, that kind of excitement that I had let build up finally was able to pour out and feel that and that kind of pride and happiness it was just like the work was done and I was extremely proud of everything I had done. Our second place award presenters from Redcon 1, Mr. Aaron Sigerman and Eric on stage. The first place, Olympia gold medal, the check for $30,000 and the title of 2020 Classic Olympia Champion to our winner. And still Olympia! Let's go Brad! Chris Bumstead! It was, it was just like a joyful moment. It wasn't like relief and like, oh my God, thank God. And oh, he did it. It was none of those feelings. It was just pure joy, like pure bliss, just like, I knew it. Like all the cards aligned perfectly. He was, yeah, he had bumps along, some bumps along the road. We had some things along the way, but everything happened exactly as it should have for him to just get to that point. And it was, I, I, I had tears of like, like his first Olympia was like, oh my gosh, he did it. But it was like, I can't believe he did it. It was, we were all kind of like, just like, it was like a shock. Not that he didn't look good or great. He won fucking Mr. Olympia. Of course you're gonna, you look great. But it was just like, whoa, that happened? Where this year it was like, it, it, I remember when he, it, 
said and still. It was just tears of joy. <laughs> like just happy, ha like smiling, just so, so happy. It does not end here. After that Mr. Olympia, we see Eleven Boom still very motivated to remain at the top of the competitive world. He had already more than proved that he was the best classic physique in the world. He had fulfilled his dream, but to this ambition is added the controversial issue that still continues to be talked about to this day. It turns out that in that competition, Chris Bumstead had reached his weight limit set by the 104 kilos category. The question mark for the next Mr. Olympia was what he looked like. Together with Ian Valier, they were going to set out their new preparation for the next Mr. Olympia. Many people were already expecting an evolution of Chris's physique again, just as striking as the one he had in that year. But with the weight limit set, Chris Bumstead was very pressured by the scale. In this preparation, Chris Bumstead showed how he was working out to gain extra inches by decompressing his spine. In this way, we know he could move up in weight. However, after the events at the Arnold Classic in the UK, cancelling the participation of competitors like Madelman or Peter Molnar, these kind of height issues still leave a lot of doubts from the IFBB. Be that as it may, Chris Bumstead managed to gain just over a centimetre in height, which allowed the weight limit to be raised to 109 kilograms. This was five kilograms more. With this margin, Zeban was able to add even more muscle mass without having to keel so thin. Every physique update he showed on networks, the fitness community was in awe. This gave hints that Chris Bumstead could bring his best version with the biggest and most conditioned physique ever seen in Classic. It looked like history was written again for this Mr. Olympia. However, there was a moment when the light stopped shining on Chris Bumstead to focus on Brian. before the show, a rivalry was seen between Chris Bumstead and Brian Asley, where Brian seemed very confident in his every word. He was moving and talking as if he knew something that the rest didn't. It just so happened that Brian Asley still had something to say. At this point, more than one began to doubt what might happen on that stage. Brian's physique was still unloaded, but the condition, the muscular quality of the back, and above all, the confidence with which he came out gave signs of a Brian Asley confident he could beat Chris Bumstead. However, the boom smiled, kept his composure and came back saying that the show would start when he took off that shirt. Defending two-time Olympia champion, Chris Bumstead. Yeah. 
It's only a dream I picture your face All day long Dance long Smile and you are glistening Laugh as no one's listening Once again, Chris Bamstead shocked the world by crowning himself the new champion. Zebu was the first classic physique to collect three championships, all in a row. And all of them in a row. This victory crowned an indelible legacy that we are still waiting to see if it can be extended, whether it can still be enlarged. But this Mr. Olympia brought us new young faces, physiques like that of Ramon Dino or Urs Kalachinsky, that awakened the same sensation of a physique that could aspire to be champion. The story of Ramon Dino you have available on the channel, and this is a story of overcoming that you cannot miss to understand all the sacrifice that made a poor boy from Brazil in one of the best classic physique today. But back to what we saw at the Mr. Olympia 2021, it is worth mentioning that we did not see the best version of Zebram in the Prayatkin. In the back it seemed that he was a little more blurred and some people who could see him up close said that at times he looked off. However, any doubts that might have remained, Chris Bumstead cleared them up in the finals. On the big stage, Zebum showed an abysmal improvement and a condition reminiscent of the best Chris of 2020. And with this work of art that Chris Bumstead left us with in his individual posing routine of this last Mr. Olympia, we could see him at last conditioned, much better than he did in the last Mr. Olympia. At last conditioned, much better than in the pre-ad gym, split, we could see him split, especially there when he did that thinker pose, as he showed a physique really at the height, let's say, at the height of what is already expected right now from Chris Bumstead. And the fact is that this man has set the bar very high. Do you to like this video, leave your comments, feedback, how you have felt while the whole story is developing, what other stories in the world of bodybuilding and fitness you would like to know. But as I said, if you like the video, you can like it. Subscribe, share it, and after this, and to finish with a phrase of Chris, Competing and there's a lot of exterior pressure on myself to like do and perform really well And that can lead to definitely a lot of stress and anxiety and me not believing I'm good enough Or I'm not doing good enough. I'm not being hard enough anything like that I'm always a little nervous heading into a prep because there's a lot of pressure, but right now I'm really grateful for that pressure I'm excited to have that pressure on me I'm excited to have expectations of greatness to come of me because I know I can fulfill them and I'm ready to go
The new year had arrived. The year of competition presented itself as a new challenge, although we could say that the champion Chris Bamstead after his third title was more consolidated than ever. Those new generations of competitors among which were Ursh and Ramon Dino would put the debate on the classic physique category red hot. Their structures were much more reminiscent of that new standard that Chris Bamstead seemed to have set. During the year of the competition, there was much speculation as to what we might see, and indeed we did. But after a long time, we saw in the classic pre-judging a one-on-one -on -one call. On this occasion, the Brazilian Ramon Dino would face Sebum, and without a doubt, what is most surprising about the Brazilian is how from one year to the next, he can bring all the improvements that the rest of the physicists seem not to get. With this, the battle was served and even more when we learned something that Sebom tried to hide in his preparation. A last minute biceps injury means that he is looking at a swollen tone and no separation in that biceps. This would leave us one more year a whole Mr. Olympia odyssey that the protagonist of this documentary would have to face. However, in every Mr. Olympia that this man steps on, we are left with details that demonstrate the winning aura that surrounds Chris Bamstead. Fucking hard work, and I know how frustrated it can be you know, through all these preps and all the shit that you've been through. But I want you to know that everything that you've done, to, everything you've done, and you're doing right now, is going to pay off because it's resonating with all of these people from around the world that are connected with you. And God, I'm looking for the higher power, but there is something there that has given you this ability to be able to connect with an audience that is just really, really just drawn to you. And this is this is your stage to do. So we really go in there and embrace it, have a fucking good time, Sorry. and make sure that you go out there and you really, really want it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's going to be really quick. So right now, it's like everything you're doing, just relax, get the, just absorb the energy and the frequency you're on right now. Nobody else can match right now. So you're just going to go out there and, you know, enjoy yourself. Let's do it. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you for everything. Yeah. Absolutely. I want to just complete the fucking project here. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. A lot of fucking, you know, a lot of work fucking put was put into this. for $50,000 and the title of 2022 Classic Physique Olympia Champion to our winner. And still, ah, Classic go. Physique Champ, four-time Olympian, Chris Bumstead. because a lot of people don't have the opportunity to kind of enjoy the moment so they look back and realize what they just went through and they're like, wow, that was like, I wish I'd been a little more present and enjoyed that a little bit more. And I think the fact people think I'm done is because I'm actually here enjoying it now. And it's a beautiful thing. I met a friend of mine, Zach Hunzinger, uh, this, this summer in June and he had a cancer and he was 19 years old. He was battling it for the third time and he told me something that you don't have to be dying to start living and he was... 19 years old, to cancer for the third time, and the most present, grateful man I had ever met in my life. And I wore his bracelet up until I got my tan every single day throughout this prep and thinking of him and what he taught me. And it was one of the most beautiful things. And he sadly passed a month after that he had taught me that lesson, but his lessons stick with me forever. And it's something that I want to pass on to everyone, just enjoying the moment, being present, love your family, just like sit here, soak it all in. And I had a moment this morning too where I was on stage and Hani comes up to me and he's like, soak this in. 
these moments come once a year and I started crying and I was like, you're so right. Like these moments are so rare and they're so beautiful. So I'm just trying to enjoy every single one of them. I'm so grateful. There's so many of you guys who love me. That my support team is so big. My fiance now who's here who loves me, Courtney. gets me through everything. I love you, Courtney. My parents are here. My boy Maddie Calvin with me through absolutely everything. Ian who showed us the road of how to get here. And Hani who took me on at the beginning of this prep as my new coach. I can't thank you enough. You're crazy, but I love you. You put me through it and it all paid off. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me. Come back next year for number five. I'm ready to rock it. I love you guys. I love you guys so much. I can't wait to be back here next year. Let's do it all again. At this point in the story, one of the issues that most denote the brilliance of Chris Bumstead's evolution is to see the perspective with which he has approached each of his preparations. From the first one, in which he talked about those health problems. As a result, the word anxiety never left his mind. Soon, that anxiety turned into pressure. The pressure of being the champion, of having so many expectations on him. Then, we moved on to the last minute problems. But this time, you see a very, very different sea boom. The anxiety and the pressure seems to turn into gratitude. And we begin to see, for this new Mr. Olympia of 2023, a character worthy of study. And still! Champion mentality. I am not bound to succeed, but I am bound to live up to the light that I have. Abraham Lincoln. Winning isn't once what I thought it was. I found it to be much more complex than our traditional definitions of success. A lot of people fall to their knees in tears after a big accomplishment, partly due to joy and gratitude, but a lot of what you see is relief and even fear. I don't say this to be cynical, but I've heard it from various people and experienced it myself. It's a crucial moment in a person's journey where you need to ask yourself what winning means to you. Otherwise, you get stuck in a hamster wheel, chasing a potentially non-existent result. What I've found is that winning doesn't happen on show day. It happens in those early mornings, painful workouts, long cardio sessions, and hungry nights. A medal around your neck and a trophy in your hands provides but a moment of relief. Maybe a surge of excitement, but one that will quickly and surely fade. Then you're back to square one and face with new decisions. Can I do it again? Will I do it again? Again. Why? There are new challenges you face now. You are so focused on winning, you didn't plan for what comes next. After all that hell you just put yourself through, are you ready to do it again, but with more intensity? If you're not improving, you're falling behind now. You've shown the world what you're capable of, and expect nothing less. Another scary, but exciting opportunity. Another opportunity to grow. You may have busted your ass and gotten lucky once. That was then, and this is now. Work 10 times smarter and harder than you did before, but you're still promised nothing. Entering hell blindly with no promise of what's on the other end is one thing, but getting to paradise and then choosing to turn back around into hell, full well knowing what to expect this time, with a pipe dream of a better paradise on the other end waiting for you, that's insanity. Paradise, like our goals, may not really be a destination, but an endless horizon we secretly don't want to reach. A never-ending reason to keep working and growing. With the intention not to accomplish goals, but to become someone who can accomplish any goal. Winning equally has no finish line. It's about the responsibility to ourselves to take control of what little things you can in this world, regardless of circumstance. To train your mind to switch your perspective and focus on being the absolute best you can be in the areas you do have control over. Having a champion mentality isn't about the trophies, medals, or success. It's about having no quit. It's not letting anyone hear you complain, standing up for all you believe in, living in your truth, and setting the standard at which you operate at for everything in your life. It's about willingly choosing to do every single thing within your power to achieve your end result. At the end of it all, you may just find that the trophies and money were never the prize you wanted but rather the journey and mentality you built along the way with everything you ever needed.
and we arrive at the Mr. Olympia of the MXL. The backstage images show us a Zeboom in a plethoric physical state. However, the reality behind this version we did not know until a few days ago. And it turns out that in the preparation to fight Ramondino one more year, 10 weeks away and doing a dead weight, Chris Bumstead suffers again a misfortune that would turn upside down all his preparation. And it is that he tells us that his dorsal fell completely injured. In those weeks, Zeboom lost up to 10 pounds of body weight, telling us that he would reach his worst physical condition in a preparation. Never had Zeboom weighed so little. And that's when we see this new attitude from Zeboom about everything. Despite the initial scare, he continues with the preparation, but approaching it more from day to day, not training his back the way he would like to, but continuing, continuing, continuing as he told us for his family, because they will always expect the best from him. And that's when the days go by, the workouts, the series and the repetitions little by little. And with this mentality, Zeboom manages to recover his physique to what we get to see in these images. A plethoric physique, but it could not be less since in this Mr. Olympia of the Year is one of the greatest physical evolutions we have seen in Classic. Ramondino, against all odds, achieves an improvement that even opens the debate. And so it is. Year after year, it seems that this Brazilian bodybuilder is the only alien capable of catching up with a Zibum also out of series. Because yes, virtually everything that Ramondino was criticized for last year, this year he emerged as the biggest surprise factor of the entire Olympia. Zebum was not only fighting against himself, but also against a competitor with the ambition to defeat him. And under these circumstances, there was no doubt that the battle was on. really um, something I'm so forever looking forward to and I'm so grateful for and just something that I'm also so excited to witness like our life together and him becoming the father to our child and watching him take that role on because I know he's just going to be so amazing at it and it's just like a part of his DNA and who he is as a person that's who Chris is just his essence, his heart, minus what you guys see on the external is truly the best thing about Chris. 
and watching him like be that person to a little baby and to a little human is like the coolest thing.